I, I had a, um, a client come in recently and ask me uh, what was important uh, to know about the EEOC. I don't think they had very much uh, information or, or they weren't familiar about what the EEOC uh, was. And so I think it's important for everyone to know, every employee to know, uh, yea, doubtless employers know, but the EEOC, uh, it stands for the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. It is, a, uh, it is a, a government entity that is run by a group of commissioners. Um, it's established under the laws of the United States of, of America. It's a federal agency. And they are charged with the responsibility of, of uh, monitoring. They are the gatekeepers, if you will, for lawsuits against employers that meet a certain criteria um, uh, that is based on a very few specific set of laws. In fact, the, the set of laws and statutes at the EEOC is responsible for being the gatekeepers over. Um, it's really only five laws. It's the uh, Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, um, the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, the uh, Age Discrimination in Employment Act, I believe that's of 1967, um, and the Equal Pay Act, also the Genetic Information uh, Act, which, which was commonly referred to as uh, GINA. Out of those uh, five set of laws, uh, predominantly is where we derive what we call equal employment law. The EEOC is a third party neutral agency that is designed to or in charge with the responsibility of going into um, employers or, in, or and investigating claims against them or and or receiving these claims from employees um, uh, that feel like they have been discriminated against or treated unfairly based on those uh, five sets uh, of laws and so it's out of those laws where you get um, uh, uh, equal pay issues where uh, males may be being paid more than females where you get sexual harassment claims that falls under title 7 disability um, uh, if you if you are disabled according to what the statute uh, says the ADA says um, your claim would arise it would come to the EEOC virtually what happens as those claims are brought before the EEOC and there are certain statutory limitations um, that apply well, uh, time frames when claims must be brought to the EEOC. They're charged with investigating those crimes. Uh, they have a team of investigators uh, that will investigate those crimes. Uh, excuse me, and I use the term crimes, pardon me, th those claims, if you will. Um, see if there was actually a violation of the law. If there's a violation of the law, they'll issue what they call um, a cause finding on those laws, and then um, and then they uh, pursue if if the claim has that type of merit, they pursue the employer for the employee in some cases. In other cases, they don't. They'll issue you a right to sue if they're not able to mediate or conciliate the case. They'll issue you a notice of right to sue, which gives you the right to go sue the employer in state or federal court on your own. Uh, one of the reasons why the EEOC is important is that based on one of those five laws, you cannot just walk into court and sue an employer based on one of those five laws. You would have to get a notice of right to sue, as it's called, from the uh, EEOC. And from once the notice of right to sue is issued, you would have 90 days from that time to file a lawsuit against the employer in a federal or state court. And so that's a broad overview of what the EEOC um, is and what their responsibility is as it relates to um, employees.